Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode 4 of 4 in our series on the calendar and how it got this way. So messed up. I'm Trace, this is DNews Plus. If you aren't familiar, we take big topics and we break them down so everybody understands them a bit better. Make sure you come subscribe and get all of our episodes. And if you haven't listened to how we got a day and a week and months, my goodness, go back and listen to that. It's really important because otherwise you're probably not going to understand the year. We started this series talking about the day and how a day is measured by the rotation of the Earth around its axis. And the year is really easy to grasp if you can get that. So like the rest of the planets in the universe, the Earth is going all around the sun. You know, it's, it's all around there in an orbit. Why? Because the Earth is not as heavy as the sun. The sun is in the middle because it's got so much mass and we just fly around it. The sun holds 99% of the mass of the whole solar system. I mean, it's, it's huge. Basically, what we're saying is lighter things revolve around the heavier things or orbit the heavier things, right? Our moon goes around us. A satellite can go around the moon or us or the sun. Those things are all more massive. The biggest reason anything has to orbit something else comes back to gravity. Gravity from the sun pulls on the planets like Earth's gravity pulls on us. And since the sun is the biggest thing in our solar system, it exerts the biggest gravitational pull. The Earth isn't pulled into the sun or doesn't fall into the sun because it's moving so fast that every time it falls toward the sun, it's not there. So instead it just orbits around it. Now, the sun's gravity and the inertia of the Earth moving are balanced because if one had a bigger force, then it wouldn't work out. We wouldn't be orbiting. And the formation of the Earth determined the number of days in our year. All of this random rotation and all of these velocities and things were figured out just through a natural chaos. The speed of the Earth gave us the specific time that we orbit the sun. But the mass of the sun also affected how much speed we needed to get the orbit that we have. On top of that, the other planets in our solar system affect the speeds of each other because they all have their own gravity. They all have different sizes, they all have different masses, they're all at different distances from the sun, so their days are different. And the 365-day calendar is thought to have started with the Egyptians based on the velocity of the Earth as it goes around this massive thing in the center of our solar system, although they didn't necessarily know that. They saw the star Canis Major, and it rose next to the sun every 365 day. This also synced with the rise and fall of the Nile River. Their 365 day calendar that they figured out started in 4236 BCE, the earliest known recorded year. Other areas have been also recorded as using 365 day calendars, the Mayans, the Babylonians, and uh, it looks like the Egyptians even knew that there was a quarter of a day tacked onto the end of that 365, uh, extra six hours. But they never quite figured out how to implement a leap year. They never implemented one. So let's bring this all back a little bit, right? We earlier talked about Julius Caesar and the Julian calendar. They created a 365 day system and they recognized that there was a leap day every four years that needed to kind of tweak the calendar back and forth. And that seems pretty smart because they did this really early on in like 45 BC or something. But it was actually wrong. It wasn't entirely accurate because the year is not actually 365 days and six exact hours long. It's 365.242199 days. 242199. That's very specific. And they came about this calculation using a variety of different astronomical methods, observing exact positions of stars, and they could do this even hundreds of years ago with pretty rudimentary equipment as long as the observations were accurate. So the difference between 365.242 and 365.25 may not seem like a lot, but it actually works out to about 11 minutes. And over a long period of time, those 11 minutes are going to add up. You know, six years later, it's a little over an hour. By the year 1000 AD, this miscalculation by the Julian calendar added seven days to the year. And by the 1500s, it had added 10 days. So the Julian calendar was pretty flawed, and they realized it, and Pope Gregory XIII fixed it, or got it fixed, and they created the Gregorian calendar. 
the Roman Catholic Church got involved because holidays were all messed up. And when you're worshiping a god, you need to make sure that the holidays are right. That's what my mom always used to say. They started dropping 10 days from October of that year, and then they fixed the leap day problem, so it wasn't every four years. Now, the leap year is, it's still every four years, except, you ready for this? Because you probably didn't know it. If the year is divisible by 100, like 1900 or 2100, but if the year is also divisible by 400, then you don't skip it, like in the year 2000. This makes us lose three leap days every 400 years, and thus the problem has been fixed. But again, it's still not perfect. No matter how much we try, we're trying to put constraints on a natural rotation. The Gregorian year is still half a minute longer than the actual solar year, which means we'll be shifted a day in 3,300 years. Of course, by then, maybe we won't need to worry. Maybe we'll have, you know, just fix the Earth's rotation or something. Most countries adopted this calendar. Catholic countries like Italy, Portugal, Spain, they did it right away. England and the colonies did it in 1752. Sweden in 1753, Japan in the late 1800s, China in the early 1900s, as well as the Soviet Union and Greece. Other countries, they use a combination of both. The Chinese calendar, they use the Gregorian calendar, but they use a lunar calendar for holidays. Most Muslim countries have their own systems, and 12 months is still pretty standard, but the year might be 10 or 11 days shorter, depending on how their leap year math works out. And this is just a year on Earth. What about other planets? How do we figure out years on those? I mean, we can barely grasp how much time we're spending zooming around the sun on our own planet. And yet Mercury's year is 88 Earth days. But one day on Mercury is 175.96 Earth days, because it takes a long time for that thing to rotate. Mars is 687 Earth days for a year. Neptune is 164.8 Earth years to orbit the sun one time but its rotation around its axis is only 16 Earth hours, meaning 89,666 days occur every Neptunian year. On the other end of the spectrum, like planet PSR 1719-14b, they orbit so fast that a year is about two Earth hours. They are 250 times closer to their sun, uh, so it's very, very far away, obviously, but very hot. I'm going to end, uh, on something a little bit bigger though, something a little more philosophical. The galactic year. Have you ever thought about this? Our whole solar system is moving throughout the Milky Way. We're on one of the arms of this spiral galaxy. And there will come a point where our solar system will orbit all the way around the center of our galaxy and back to where it started. And this journey takes our sun 225 to 250 or so million years, traveling about 800,000 kilometers an hour, or about 500,000 miles an hour. So have you ever wondered, one solar year, if you will, or galactic year, is almost 250 million years. That's pretty cool. In the whole history of humanity, we've probably not even gone a galactic month Somebody should figure out galactic months. That would be really cool. So there it is. Day, week, month, and year. How they were calculated. How they were named and adjusted throughout the last 6,000 years of human history. And it's pretty crazy. Like everything that humans do. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thanks for those who've liked and subscribed here on YouTube. You can also find the show over on iTunes if you just want an audio podcast. We squish all the episodes together. Let us know down in the comments if you have uh, any suggestions for future episodes of D News Plus. We like to take a big topic and break it way down into the brass tacks. So. Tell us down there if you have any huge topic ideas. Come find us over on Twitter. You can find the show at DNews. We share that Twitter account with my other show, DNews. And then you can also come find me if you just want to chit chat about the show. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time on DNews Plus.